Okay, let's get started. Okay. <clears throat> Human impact on the environment. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a look at water quality today. We took a look at water um, availability yesterday. And of course, the two do affect one another. If the quality of the water is not good, then of course, it's not going to be available for us to use. Okay, so water pollution is uh, any addition of harmful substances um, in excess amounts of or, harm, or, or excess amounts of harmless substances to the surface or groundwater supplies and is caused by mostly human activities. Substances that cause pollution are called pollutants and the main human impacts of water quality in South Africa include wastewater disposal, so any water that's not clean anymore, that you've already used, your grey water, your toilet water, your bath water, any water that's been used by machine um, to cool down machinery. And it can also spread disease and cause eutrophication. We talked about eutrophication yesterday. We're going to see a few images of that today. Agricultural drainage, which is another cause of eutrophication. Okay, so uh, in agriculture, if we add any um, any additional substances to to the to the soil, um, and I'm especially thinking of things like phosphates, phosphates and nitrates are common ones. So I put fertilizer into the soil and that phosphates and nitrates get into the water systems, into the underground water and eventually into rivers. It can also cause eutrophication. Industrial waste disposal, which uh, and includes thermal pollution, which can also, because of increased metabolic activity, lead to eutrophication. Also, mace, mining waste disposal, we, um, especially if we talk about, we talk about acid main, um, um, acid mine drainage that happen that pollutes the water. The introduction of alien plants um, uh, into the waterways will also decrease sunlight and oxygen levels, making water unhealthy for animals and humans. And a common example of that is the water hyacinth. Okay, so there's some examples of water pollution. You can see that there's waste water pouring into the river over there. Uh, this foam indicates clear phosphates inside, um, inside that water, and of course, other industrial and household wastes. Okay. Um, Human impacts on water quality. Uh, uh, we talked about wastewater disposal, uh, and it also includes a sewage like feces and urine. Uh, so our gray, uh, our water that we use and our toilets end up in um, if it ends up into a river somewhere, when a dam somewhere where it's not purified as yet. And household waste, such as toilet paper, soap. Soap is a big one, containing a lot of phosphates. And detergents uh, that, and also containing a lot of microorganisms. Um, wastewater can spread disease such as cholera and dysentery. Um, and if used to irrigate crops, may spread disease when humans eat the crops. We talked about previously, we talked already about the, the tapeworm in a previous section of work. If we talk about the tapeworm, uh, that's typical. If we um, if we get feces into water and plants grow in that water and then along comes a um, an animal that is actually gonna eat that and then we in turn eat the animal um, we are going to then get um, the tapeworm into us there's typical examples of eutrophication. You can see the algal bloom. You can see it's filled up with algae. No sunlight is going to get into there at all. It's not going to be able to penetrate the, the upper layers of the water. Okay, 
Okay, if the purification may occur when there's high levels of nitrogen in sewage or phosphorus in soaps and detergents, um, we also talked about the fact that like thermal pollution can also cause it. This will cause algae and other plants to grow rapidly, close, closing off any sunlight. No sunlight is able to penetrate in there. The resulting death of plant life um, and the, um, in the lower parts of water increases um, and then the decomposition will increase the, the use of oxygen and then that in turn leads to massive death of organisms um, and another factor to that is um, also these phosphorus and soaps and detergents and nitrogen same type of materials we find in agricultural drainage um, and when we use fertilizers and pesticides it soaks into the groundwater from the groundwater it gets into the rivers and the wetlands this may lead to beautification and may also even be toxic directly to any animals or plants inside the water industrial waste okay includes pumping waste products into rivers this may lead to increasing water temperatures, thermal pollution. We talked about, especially this especially happens in, for example, electricity production. When when power stations are power stations heat up water through different means uh, to turn into steam to drive a turbine to drive a generator, and then typically around any power station you would find these cooling towers these big cooling towers um, and when you that's actually just steam there but if you don't cool that water down enough and normally they reuse that water but some of it gets into um, the water systems and that, that can cause um, thermal pollution also salt levels in water may increase from the disposal of sulfates sodiums and chlorides poisonous chemicals may be released into rivers and wetlands and will kill many living organisms and make the water unfit for the use of humans. So I think I skipped the slide there. Okay, mining pollution. <clears throat> okay, you'll be talking mainly about acid mine drainage. When we talk about acid mine, mine drainage, what basically happens is, let me just get a, a go and draw a new page. Um, there we go, and let's make it a normal page here. Okay, so if this is the, the soil, and I mined into the soil, so I dug into the ground and there's these channels under the, um, under the ground where people used to mine. Then it starts raining. Okay, so rain is coming down, rain is coming down. And then, what will happen there is this will fill up with water. So this is filling up with water. And as it fills up with water, it then dissolves any salts and especially heavy metals out of the soil. And that pushes up towards the ground later if there's enough water, uh, but that water cannot be used because of the amount of heavy metals and things inside that causes it to become acidic. And that's why we call it acid mine drainage. Okay. So, mining waste disposal often pumps uh, into a holding. Yes, Ruan, you have a question before I continue? Yes, sir. I want to ask, how does um, metal make the water acidic? Acidic, okay. So if you combine any metal to, um, if you combine any metal to water, um, and when we're talking about acidic, uh, acidic, I'm not talking about high or very low pH levels. I'm talking about taking the pH level from about 6.8, which is normal for water, let's say about 6.4 or even lower 6.2 and that's acidic enough any metal oxide any metal oxide will act like an acid any metal oxide dissolved in water will act like an acid and um, 
because the, of the, the moment a metal oxide gets into water, there's a reaction that happens that releases the, um, the hydrogen um, as it dissolves into the water, which causes the pH to, to lower. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Those, and especially if you take a look at any metals, most metals we find on Earth are metal oxides. Because oxygen bonds so easily with metals, we commonly call it rust. Um, but any metal oxide that, that's in contact with water will become slightly uh, CD. Okay. So, metal such as mercury may be stored, stored in the flesh of plants and animals and build up along the food chain. Some metals such as mercury may be stored in the flesh of um, plants and animals and build up along the food chain, killing many organisms. Let's quickly talk about that. Um, I'm going to add another page here. Okay, so what happens is that, let's say there's a pond of water, and this water has a lot of mercury inside it. Okay, so um, let's say in that pond of water, there's a lot of little insects. And the insects, they, they get this water into them uh, with the mercury. So there's a little bit of mercury in each of these, in each of these little insects. But now a fish comes along, uh, or a few fish comes along, and eats these these insects. In the end, when they eat the insects, there's only three fish, but there's lots of insects. So each fish now gets more mercury inside it because it builds up in their flesh and stays there. It doesn't go anywhere else. One bird comes along. Uh, okay, so you've got a little bit of mercury, I've got a little bit of mercury, and uh, a bird comes along, and then this bird eats the it's the fish and all of the mercury that was inside this fish now is all inside. So there's a buildup of this, the, of the mercury along the food chain. And so the higher up the food chain we go, then the, the more the effect becomes um, seen. Because it wasn't going to eat the insects because there was only a little bit of mercury in the insects. But because it builds up every time and the food chain becomes less and less individuals to the top, we find that there's a buildup of the mercury inside the, the higher the food chain goes. Okay, so I've got two people that's got questions. Um, Pashoku, I'll ask you a question first and then Ruan. It's a, um, so, so, so does it happen that the bed will like grow consist of much? much um that uh, that substance just mentioned because isn't that maybe the fish will excrete the mercury yeah that, that that's 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 exactly the problem is that the fish doesn't excrete the mercury it, it tends to build up inside the flesh of the fish and the problem is with things like that is it actually doesn't it's not being excreted it's not being excreted by the kidneys it doesn't go through the digestive system properly. It's absorbed into the flesh and it stays there. Okay, Ruan, your question. So don't some fish naturally have mercury in them? Yes. Or is it all... No, you're quite right. And especially fish um, in certain parts, um, especially uh, saltwater fish in certain parts of the world tend to have a lot of mercury build up into... And that's why they warn you to, um, if you eat certain types of fish, not to eat too much of um, more than two or three times a week, especially in those areas, um, in those areas for certain type of fish that tends to uh, be uh, built up mercury very easily into their flesh. But you're quite right with that, yeah. Okay. Now, gold mining, yes, uh, there's another question. And so, so what's the what's the like what's the uh, disadvantage of of um, ingesting mercury? Okay, mercury is poisonous to us in in, in a high amounts. 
um, and it especially affects the nervous system. It has a detrimental effect on the nervous system. Uh, it's associated with diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Okay. Does it like does it contribute to does it contribute to the body's salt level or something like that? Uh, no, it contributes to the breakdown of the nervous system or specifically the breakdown of the synapse between the, um, between one neuron going to the next neuron. So you get also, diseases like Parkinson's or uh, Alzheimer's because of it. Yes, Ron? Uh, so is it dangerous if you hold it in your hand? It is actually because some of it is actually absorbed by your skin. Now I've done it before. Um, I've done it before, uh, actually many times as a kid. Um, but uh, just, just not for long periods of time, and not, not frequently, because some of it oh. is actually absorbed by your skin. So it, it won't be bad if you do it like once. Right. Yeah, no, it's not, you're not, not suddenly going to get Parkinson's in 10 years time because you touched uh, mercury for a few minutes today. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay, just don't ingest it, please. <laughs> then you will, then you will definitely feel effects immediately. Okay. I was thinking about doing it, but thank you, sir. <laughs> please, no, don't. So gold mining, okay, so gold mining is especially, and as you know, South Africa depends on its economy a lot of gold, so we have a lot of gold mines, and it releases high acidic water, which gets into groundwater, and this dissolves metals found in rock, eventually becoming sulfuric acid. As acid mine uh, water fills up old mine shaft, it eventually reaches the surface, and from here, it washes into rivers and wetlands and moves moves into underground water supplies and kills organisms. Okay, alien species, um, so non-indigenous species in South Africa. So the introduction of alien species of plants, plants that are not indigenous to South Africa into waterways will decrease sunlight and oxygen levels, making it unhealthy for animals. A common example of this is the water hyacinth. Now, if you've ever been to the um, uh, to the Hot Tobiasper Dam, you would know that they have a big water hyacinth problem. Um, some alien plants require more water for growth and may deplete our groundwater supplies. Okay, water purification. Okay. So as water pollution increases in South Africa, reduce, uh, it reduces water quality and it will lead to an increase in waterborne diseases like cholera, for example. Um, that decreases the availability of the water for drinking and agriculture, and it also damages our fresh water systems, which we don't have a lot of fresh water in South Africa. Water purification and recycling of water will help reduce water pollution and improve our water quality. Preventing pollution by improving means of wastewater disposal through proper sanitation, improving agricultural practices, um, like using biological control instead of pesticides, will help improve water quality. Improved treatment of industrial and mining waste can also purify water more before we leave, uh, put it back into the environment. And this is especially with regards to thermal pollution. Uh, if we can cool down that water enough, uh, before it gets into the um, back into the eco e uh, ecosystems, then that will be very good. Also, we can in remove alien invasive plants, and um, especially those around our aquatic ecosystems. Okay. So if we purify water, that means we can use it over and over again. But before we continue the, with that, I see there's some uh, some more questions. Yes, let's go. I, everyone, you can ask first. No, so I just forgot to lower my hand. Okay, uh, time to Any questions? Is it, so can you please go back to the previous slide? Yes. Because I saw they were talking about they were talking about pesticide using to purify water, but didn't say someone that pesticides are used to kill mosquitoes. Okay. 
Pesticides is used to kill mosquito. And what we're saying is that if we use biological controls, so if we can get something that actually um, eats the mosquitoes, instead of adding a pesticide to, uh, to the water, then that, that would actually be better. So use more, um, better ways to control the mosquitoes other than pesticides. Does pesticides maybe consist of nitrogen or something like that? I'm for, okay, so I'm for... uh, remember, if I'm adding pesticides into the water, I'm not just killing what I want to kill, I actually, I'm actually killing the whole ecosystem. I can't say uh, it's difficult for pesticides uh, to uh, develop a pesticide or uh, a poison that is only going to affect um, one insect. It's going to affect all the insects, for example. So, and that's the main problem with pesticides. It's, it affects the whole ecosystem, not just what you want to get rid of. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay. So, as water pollution increases in South Africa, the reduced water quality will lead to increased waterborne diseases like cholera and typhoid. Uh, and the availability of our already low supplies of water will be affected. And of course, we need it for drinking, for agriculture, mining industry. It drives our economy. We need it to live um, with. And this could have a negative impact on our economy and our social development. Now, also, you've got to think about what is the cost of water? What is the cost of water? And the cost of water is going to affect many things. Um, our livelihoods, because if we have to pay more to treat the water. What is the cost going to be of that treatment? Um, also, we need to think what is happening to our ecosystems. And then what is the best way to recycle and uh, reduce our water pollution and improve our water quality? Okay, so um, we, we commonly use chemicals called coagulants uh, to remove Okay, so sorry, I was kicked off for a moment. Okay, so basically there's several ways of, of, of treating the water. The first treatment of water is normally coagulants. And when I have coagulants, let's say I've got a container with water and inside this water, there's some suspended material inside this water. Um, and what a coagulant does is it actually goes and bonds together these little pieces and when it bonds them together, they become heavy enough to eventually then sink to the bottom where I can remove them. Um, this is similar to what, for example, uh, you would use a French drain. Now, what is a French drain? A French drain is when, when water, uh, when water is, when I want to recycle water, I'm going to have a, a structure similar to this. Water is getting into here and flowing down here. And then you let it wait and stand a while. And as it stands, uh, those coagulants that are heavier starts to sink to the bottom. And then as the water level increases, the water coming out at the top, I can pump that out, is going to be cleaner than the water below. There's another system that they can use. Um, just give me a moment. Um, okay. There's another system that they can use, and I'm going to uh, let you ask your question now, Ruan, in a moment. Okay. Um, the other system that they can use is um, they actually let the water flow down a bunch of cold pipes. And as the water flows, um, flows down these pipes um, fast enough then what's going to happen is that it is going to, the coagulants will eventually, um, oh, sorry, this is now, the, there we go. The coagulants is norm, are then going to stick in the corners and then the water coming out on this side is going to be a lot cleaner. So that's, that's why you get rid of big, big pieces of pollutants. But 
of course, things that are dissolved more is more difficult to get rid of, and we're going to discuss that in a moment. Ron, you have a question before I discuss that? Yes, sir. Um, you, I'm not sure if you, you kind of cut off uh, a little bit for me. Um, oh, okay. You're discussing the curriculums. Okay, sorry about that. I think my internet connection, apologies. I think my internet connection is a bit slow because it also kicked me off for a moment. Uh, let's just try and get through it. I will send the recording on the um, Google Classroom again. I did send yesterday's recording as well a few months ago. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, we can also filter it. Okay, so if you filter it, um, you pour the water through something that's going to give the bigger pieces back. And then also we can then disinfect it. And one of the disinfect, there's various types of disinfectants we use in South Africa. Um, and around the world, it's common. We can use chlorine, can disinfect it. So we put some chlorine in the water. Um, we can actually also uh, use ozone. Ozone is a, another common way of uh, disinfecting water. And um, just for interest sake, in South Africa, we also tend to, and a lot of countries around the world, we tend to add fluoride to the water. And this has a double effect. It doesn't fix the bacteria, but it also builds up fluoride levels in the humans drinking that water. And when fluoride levels um, build up in humans, it actually makes our teeth stronger. So we have less teeth decay because of the fluoride that is um, placed in the water afterwards. Okay. So. Question. Yes, also, you take about you talk about chlorine, and um, usually we're told that um, cheek is a source of chlorine. So they tell me that they use cheek because I once asked, and they told me that chlorine cannot be used to clean water. It yes, kind of intoxicates the water. Yes, but that that's why. Um, and for anybody that lives in a rural environment, they would actually use cheek uh, to clean the water. But you need to be very careful about the amount of uh, amount of jig that you put into the water before you can actually drink it. I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a very small amount. It's like um, a, a teaspoon in every 10 liters of water that you need to use. So it's very small amount and you must be careful not to overdo it because it is actually poisonous in large amounts. Oh, okay. okay, any more questions before I continue? Okay, let's continue then. Preventing water pollution. Okay, so if we can prevent water pollution, it means that we're going to save money on trying to clean the water afterwards. Um, all people should have access to proper sanitation and water treatment centers need to be functioning properly. Agricultural practices need to improve so that we don't get the chemicals into the water in the first place uh, through runoff. And then biological controls can use to be used instead of pesticides. Improved water treatment in industrial and mining waste so that we are purified before released into the environment. Um, will reduce pollution. Alien invasive plants can be removed and, and controlled uh, from aquatic ecosystems and they can be removed mechanically by chopping down them or burning them. Chemical means by spraying them with herbicides that will kill them using biological methods which is be even better by using their natural enemies but you've got to make sure that they're species specific. And then some alien plants require more water for growth and they deplete our groundwater. And it's also important to remove them when possible. Okay, and that's the end of our that's the end of the notes for today. Uh, can I ask is there any other questions that you guys still want to ask? Yes, sir. Yes. Um say uh, say this said on the code last one that we were writing on the eighth and ninth, if I'm not mistaken. We're yes, that's correct. The test and we're yeah. also going to write the experiment. Like, do, do they count for 10 remarks? And, like, is they it count a, for is your term. Open book? Um, is it they, an open will, book? they will not be open book. Um, and um, I need to double check. I'll, um, I'll double check tomorrow with Mr. Tonga. What are we still doing with the people that are writing for them? 
So for most probably it will not be open book. And for those people, if you are still going to write at home, again, there's going to be very limited time for you to actually go into your book. It will open and it will close within a short amount of time. But I need to double check on what our strategy is with regards to the, uh, uh, the test on the 8th. My advice is to you study it like it's it's not going to be open book because it probably is not going to be. So the experiment. Yes. Sorry. Simple. So like so the experiment, how are going to carry out the experiment? No, it's a practical worksheet. It's a practical worksheet. Uh, that that's got details on it with a case study that you read through and you complete it. If there's anything else, um, but I, let, I looked through it today, there shouldn't be uh, necessary, but there might be a possibility that if there's any practical part to it, I will make a video for you, uh, for you and post it before you, you complete the test. Okay, but for this one, I don't no, think it's going to be necessary. Ruan, yes? I wanted to ask, uh, when is the test again? I didn't get, get the, it. It's the 8th of September is your test. And I believe the 9th is the, the practical. And it's on, okay. the Google, it's on the Google Classroom is the scope. All right, yes, so thank you. Can you please post the revised ATP, the license revised ATP on Google Classroom? Okay, I'll do that, no problem. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you then, guys. I will see you then again on Monday. Thank you very much.